Does your Citizen EcoDrive watch tick in two-second increments like this? Even though you've put it under the light to charge time and time again, well, you probably just need a new battery. Hey, I'm Wit, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your rechargeable capacitor inside your Citizen EcoDrive. Now, you'll need a special Citizen battery like this one that is specific to your movement number, and I'll explain how you find that info out later on in the video. Uh, you also might want to pick up an um, inexpensive watch repair kit like this. It's got various tools that you'll need. Uh, today, only a couple tools needed, but uh, there are also tools in there you may use for other projects. And I'll leave a link down in the description below of this exact kit that I bought on Amazon. It's very cheap, but uh, again, it's got some tools that uh, come in handy quite a bit. Now, if you have a diver's bracelet on your uh, Citizen watch, you're going to want to separate the uh, two bands so you've got room to work on the case back. Easiest to do this by using the micro adjust here or where it connects with the... Uh, the clasp if you don't have a micro adjust all right so you just want to um, take your hand tool here separate the clasp and uh, you'll notice the tool has got a, a fork end like this and then it's also got a single rod end. that's what we're using today you just push down on the spring bar that's uh, in that micro adjust area and you want to put your finger over the top as well because once you push it down and separate the two pieces it can fly off into the room and you'll lose it forever uh, so take it out, set it aside. You'll need that, obviously, to put it back. All right, now we'll inspect the case back. This is what I mentioned earlier about your movement number. If you'll see a series of numbers, um, usually starts with a letter and then three numbers, a dash, and then some other characters right here. So this is your movement number, the first part of that series. This is E111 on this watch. And you'll it's small here, but you'll be able to see it on your watch, all right? And that's how you find out which uh, battery you need to order. Then the notches here on the case back, you're going to want to use those with your tool here to loosen the case back. You just line up those three nubs, and you're going to have to look at the case back and kind of hold the uh, removal tool up near it to see where it will line up on three spots. It may not be at every hole. You might have to readjust. So you get these two horizontal ones close, and then you can line up one at a time. And once you are in the slots, you just uh, rotate this dial so that uh, they become closer together and it becomes a little snug. Then I put my thumb over the top to hold that in place, move on down to the bottom uh, lever, and that removes that single uh, nub and tighten it up. If you go a little too far, you might feel or hear a click. And so you just need to go down and back it out a little bit and then just tighten up just a little bit so it's snug. Once you've got it like that, just turn to loosen, and you don't have to go the whole way. We just want to get it uh, finger loosened, you know, so we can do the rest finger-wise. finger, finger wise. And if it's still too tight to do with your fingers, you can grab the tool and put it in the notch. I also like to use a, um, a wooden cuticle pusher. That way, if you slip, you don't scratch the case back, you know, like this one. See how it's all scratched? <laughs> hey, it's a 12-year-old watch. It's fine. So here we go. This is the movement you're working with. It's tiny, right? We are going to re replace this capacitor, the battery, right here. And, of course, I'll zoom in so you get a better look at how this is going to go. All right, so you just grab the tweezers from your toolkit and that push rod, and you just slide this out of the way. And then you can remove the battery. Now, I should note, you don't want to use these tweezers on your new battery. I don't care about this old one because this battery is junk. All right, but if your tweezers touch the top side and the bottom side of the battery, as is the case here. That's the easiest way to grab the battery, right? You can short circuit that battery. Now, you also don't want to touch it with your bare fingers because the skin or the uh, oil on your skin can also uh, do the same effect over time. So there is the battery. Again, you're not going to hold the new one with the tweezers like this. Uh, and you see the little bronze nub there? That's the part that goes into the slot uh, on the uh, on uh, where the hole is on, on the battery and I'll show you that here on the watch in the movement this little slot right here that's where that nub came out of you want to take note of that as you remove the battery so you're familiar with it and you know exactly where it goes back into place all right here is that slot again I'll show you you can when you look in there you can see uh, like a little spring-loaded uh, connector so see that bronze spot right there that's the part that's going to connect with your new capacitor, your new battery. 
with that nub that we showed you earlier. So then just grab that and kind of line it up. Just get it close. You're not going to have to, it only goes in one way. So you can see right here, it won't sit down. When it was, I turn it, boom, it falls into place. Now you're lined up. All right. So then just put your finger over it and get your tool. Again, this is the wooden dowel I'm using, a uh, cuticle pusher and slide that lever out of the way so you can push the battery down with your finger and you want to make sure it's flat all right so i usually will get my finger or you can get the um the flat side of the cuticle pusher and push down just kind of tap down gently to make sure that it's level all the way around there's not it's not sticking up on one end over another and then you just want to ensure that uh, this little lip here on the lever is over the top side of the battery and obviously that first spot we did was the lip right here, also on the top side of the battery. And that's it. You are back in business. So we'll flip this watch over and you're going to see that uh, if you keep it out of the light, it's going to continue doing the two second increments, right? Because it's not getting a charge. But as soon as I give it some light, it's going to go to one second increments again. Watch this. There you go. So now your watch is operating again uh, correctly and it's recharging that internal capacitor, the battery that we just replaced. So you want to check your manual or the Citizen website to find out how long your recharge time is. It's specific to your watch. So uh, check that out and it'll give you an idea of what you need to do before you start wearing and, and using it daily again. Uh, you know, in best case scenario to get it fully charged, right? And that's it. So also, uh, when you make that order of your uh, watch battery, you may want to also uh, buy a new gasket for the case back. You're not going to be getting back in here again, hopefully, uh, for another 10 to 15 years. So it's a good idea to replace that rubber seal. At the very, very least, I would inspect it to make sure it's not dry rotted, it's not cracked, uh, it's not in two pieces, etc. Because this determines the... Um, waterproof uh, uh, ness of your watch all right so then you just set it in a sunny windowsill uh, let it start doing its thing and recharging right again read that manual or check the citizen website to find out your recharge time and what the best location is but sticking it out in full sunlight is the best way to get it quickly charged correctly so that's it hit like and subscribe if you like this video and we'll see you next time